Hare Krishna, Chaitanya and yes. Um So you've mentioned a lot about humility and tolerance. And personally, I find that it is um, easier to be, for example, tolerant with devotees because they're already so kind. And we know that they uh, perhaps are on the path of purification and um, ha their hearts are set in the right place in Krishna. But sometimes I find that it is harder to be tolerant with, for example, non-spiritualists who have that exploitive mentality who just want to take advantage and just uh, really it's I win and you lose. And how do we find that fine balance of being tolerant and not being abused and mistreated, as you said, just like a twig, just, just blown away in the wind? Do we ever stand up for ourselves? And how do we know when to be tolerant and when to stand up or or, or, or do we not? I, I think I just, how do we know not to become uh, taken advantage of? Okay. This is an important question. So in general, rather than saying that it's easier to tolerate with devotees than with non-devotees, we could say that it's easier to be tolerating with people who are themselves tolerating. And it's, uh, <laughs> if somebody is intolerant, then being tolerant with them is, is much more difficult. So one way I, I see tolerance is that tolerance means to keep small things small so that we can focus on big things. The same Bhagavad Gita that talks about, am I audible to all of you? Yes, bro. Okay. So the same Bhagavad Gita that talks about tolerance, say 2.14 in the Bhagavad Gita talks about Tam Sitiksha Sobharata. Tolerate. But that same, sec same Gita is also exhorting Arjuna to fight a war. Now we could say a war is definitely not an expression of tolerance. We, we could normally would consider tolerance and violence to be the opposite extremes. So why is there why is there a call for tolerance within a book that is a call that at least in some ways looks like a call for ending nonviolence? So the point here is that the Bhagavad Gita is itself neither a call for tolerance itself nor is it a call for violence itself. It is a call for transcendence. That one has to raise one's consciousness to the spiritual level. And especially because Arjuna was a king, so he was a ruler, so he had to create the social structures, oversee the maintenance of those structures that would help people to raise their consciousness to the spiritual level. And for that purpose, normally tolerance is the way forward because our tendency is to often get carried away with the emotions generated by the events of the moment. You said this to me, I'll do this. This first thing happened, that thing happened. This thing happened, I'll do this now. So we tend to get swept away by that. And in that sense, we need to tolerate. So to but basically tolerance could be towards that which is, which is not very important but which seems very important at that particular time because of the movement, because of the, because of the pressure of the situation. Tolerance can also be towards things that are unchangeable. Like the Bhagavad Gita says, tolerate the changes of heat and cold yes, and tolerate pleasure and pain that they come along the way of life. So that's true. But then the Bhagavad Gita says that we all have a role to play. We all have a, a dharma to follow. And that is a big thing. So don't let circumstantial, say, pleasure or pain, which may be too trivial to get distracted by, or which may be just inevitable. But don't let that distract us from that which we are meant to do. So we have a dharma, we have a, we have a purpose in our life, we have a duty, we have a calling. This can all refer to different things based on what the context is. But the, the, we need to focus on the big things. So keep small things small so that we can focus on big things. So tolerance is in that sense not 
never standing up for oneself it is actually tolerance is knowing that everything is not worth fighting for so it doesn't mean nothing is worth fighting for it doesn't mean never standing up but it is that we get too caught up and our tendency is to um, we could say just to get reactive about things that are unworthy of a reaction or things that are unproductive in reacting to them they are they are in they are inconsequential or they are inevitable so in those two cases we we don't get ourselves distracted by them but there are things about which which are which are important for us about which we are responsible and we need to take a stand in those things